All right, here are solutions to problem 51 off the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, back to linear algebra, we're asked, which of the following is an ortho orthonormal basis for the column space of this matrix right here? Um, well, before we even start, we can eliminate a couple possibilities. Orthonormal, the ortho part tells you that the vectors have to be orthogonal to each other. In other words, their dot product is zero. So yeah, if I were to dot product this zero, yeah, that'd be zero as well of any two here would give me zero. Um, what about here? If you take the dot product of this vector and this vector, one times two over root five plus zero plus another zero, that's not gonna be zero. These are not orthogonal. So before I even do any work, I know that that ain't my answer. Um, ortho, normal, kind of two words in there, the orthogonal part and the, the normal part. Uh, not normal like a normal vector, but normal as in these have to be unit vectors. So what's the length of this vector right here? Oh yeah, it's one, because the square root of one squared plus zero squared plus zero squared, that is one, and this is one. And Okay, most of these, <coughs> excuse me, most of these uh, are unit length. Uh, even this, well, I don't even care about this guy, because that ain't my answer, but I think that'll end up being unit length as well. That sure as hell ain't unit length. This is not unit length. Uh, because 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared, uh, the square root of that is not 1. What is it? I don't know. I don't care. It's not 1. Neither is this length 1. Uh, so that can't possibly be my answer. So I've moved it down to 3. I guess that helps a little bit. Um, two of these three have two vectors, whereas the other one has three vectors. So if I could just figure out how many vectors, uh, what dimension this basis should be, I can eliminate another possibility, maybe two. Or maybe just one. Anyways, let's get going. Um, which of the following is an orthonormal basis? So the way you can find an orthonormal, eh, it's hard for me to say, an orthonormal basis is by using this thing called the Gram-Schmidt process. I think technically this is just, this process only refers to the last couple steps you do here. Um, but it's the basic idea. You're gonna take this guy and you're gonna row reduce. So row reducing on this test should always be easy. Um, or at least it seems like it always is. They don't give you ones that are really challenging to row reduce. They want to go pretty quick. They don't want you wasting a whole bunch of time. So note that if I, for this second row, if I add it to this first row, I get a zero here, a zero here, a negative one here, and a negative one here. Uh, and then if I want to knock out some zeros here, I can add twice the second row to the third row, and that'll give me a zero here and a zero here. Negative six plus five is negative one, and four plus negative five is also negative one. Uh, so now I can knock out this third row using the second row, and what I get, not the prettiest thing in the world, is a row reduced form, or row reduced enough, uh, zero, zero, negative one, negative one. If I felt like, could, if I felt like it, I could make those positive ones, uh, zero, zero. There we go. Note that I have two columns, the first and the third, that have, what's that called, a pivot, I think. Um, a non-zero entry as far to the left as possible. I guess that's how you justify that. The first and third column. So what that tells me is that I am going to have, I'm going to use two different vectors for my basis. Oh, just got rid of another answer. It ain't that one. Um, I don't want to take this first and third column here. What I want to do is go back to my original matrix and take the first and third column of that. So those are the two I'm going to be looking at. Um, the notation that is fairly standard, I think, is to call that V1 and V2. So V1 is this column vector, 1, negative 1, and 2. And V2 is this column vector, 2, negative 3, 5. And now I think technically is where the Gram-Schmidt process begins. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two vectors, uh, and I am going to produce um, an orthonormal basis out of them. And the way I do that is this first vector is pretty much going to go straight into my basis. Uh, I just need it to be unit length. So let's figure out the length of this guy. Well, that would be 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared, the square root of that. So 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6. I guess the length is root 6. So what I will call u1, or e1, does it matter? What am I doing here? Um, I'm going to call it u1. I'm gonna call it E1. I know this doesn't matter. 
Uh, no, I'm going to call it U1. Sorry, I keep changing. So U1 would be 1 over root 6 times this column vector, 1, negative 1, 2. So if you feel like it, you could rewrite that as 1 over root 6, negative 1 over root 6, and 2 over root 6. You could do that if you felt like it. Uh, but it's also nice to have it in this form when you do the rest of this work. Hey, I got my answer. Look, my answer is E. Right? My answer is not this guy. It's this guy because there's that vector I was just finding. The test makers assumed that I would use the Gram-Schmidt process and I would get this as my answer. I'm going to keep going uh, just in case they'd give you one where this vector was the first vector twice somehow and you needed to know what this second guy was. So I'll really go through this Gram-Schmidt process. <clears throat> but really at this stage I'm done have the answer to the problem anyways. Uh, to figure out my second vector, essentially what I'm going to do uh, is, let's see, I'm going to use the letter W. Sorry if I'm going overkill with the letters here. Uh, the Gram-Schmidt tel process tells me that the way I can get a vector that is orthogonal to this vector is to start with V2, this guy right here, um, but don't use it exactly. <clears throat> Instead, you want to subtract off something. And really what you're doing is you're subtracting off the projection of this vector uh, onto this first vector. And the way I accomplish that is I find the dot product between, what is it, u1 and v2. And then I multiply that by u1. Uh, and this will give me my second, well, almost give me my second basis vector here. The only problem is this might not be unit length. So I might have to scale it like I did up here, and then I'll be done. So let's go through and do that. Uh, let's first figure out the dot product, u1 dot v2. So let's see, I got u1. I figured it out up here. I'm going to use this first form to make my life easy. 1 over root 6 times 1, negative 1, 2, and half. Want the dot product of that and v2, v2 is this 2, negative 3, 5. So I'll kind of find the dot product of the vectors and then multiply it by this scalar out here. So 1 times 2 gives me 2, plus negative 1 times negative 3 gives me 3 more, so now I'm up to 5, plus 2 times 5 gives me 10 more, so now I'm up to 15, so I get 15 over root 6. Uh, 15 is the dot product, and then multiplied by this scalar right here. So W2 would be equal to V2, which remember was 2, negative 3, 5, minus uh, that dot product, which was 15 over root 6, times U1, which was this vector here. And I'm again going to use this kind of factored form. Uh, because 15 over root 6 times 1 over root 6 is 15 over 6, and that reduces to uh, 5 halves. So really what I have is 2, negative 3, 5, minus uh, 5 halves, negative 5 halves, and 10 halves. And so what that gives me, 2 minus 5 halves gives me negative 1 half. Negative 3 minus negative 5 halves is the same as negative 3 plus 5 halves, which is positive. No, which is negative 1 half again. And 5 minus 10 halves is 5. So I get a 0 down here. And so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I have this thing W2 here. Um, but I use W instead of U because that's not my answer because it's not unit length. So the last little thing I have to do is find the length of W2. Uh, so I got negative 1 half squared which is 1 quarter, plus negative 1 half squared, which is another 1 quarter. So what I get is the square root of 2 quarters, a.k.a. the square root of 1 half, a.k.a. 1 over root 2. Uh, so this is the length. I want to scale by this length. So I want to take this vector right here, and I want to divide it by this length right here, which is equivalent to saying, uh, maybe down here, that u2 is equal to uh, the square root of 2 times negative 1 half, negative 1 half, 0. So I get negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2, and 0. Wow, that's pretty messy. 
Uh, and that's exactly what I, well, almost exactly what I have here. Let's see, there's a couple of differences. Uh, we'll multiply this vector by negative one to make the signs line up. That gives me, I don't know if I should write an equals right there. I'm just changing the direction of this vector. I'm not changing its length. Uh, and it will still be orthogonal to this other guy. So I get, could say that this turns into root two over two, root two over two and zero. Uh, and you're like, that's still not what it is here. Yeah, my answer is better than their answer. Um, Cause theirs isn't, they didn't rationalize the denominator, which isn't a, whatever. You might've learned in an algebra class that you should rationalize the denominator here. We'll multiply the top and the bottom by root two. And then that turns into exactly this right here. So anyways, if you needed to know the entire basis, you could, you could find the other vector here. And sure enough, both of these guys match up. But really, as I commented on, we knew the answer long ago once we found this first vector here. Um, we had been able to eliminate all the other choices. So I'll end this here.